got my juice and water here with me and I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I get to see you again. Yes, I know. Part two. That's part right. two. Yeah. yeah. Right. I titled the other one part one. So I'm like, here's part two. And today we're going to get to hear more from you. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited just to hear more of your story and your background, how you got into uh, raw foods, plant foods, and what your health was like and what kind of healing were you looking for and what healing did you find along the way? Okay, sure. So just one second, have a bit of water. Um, okay. mm. So I was sick almost my entire life. I've had over 60 surgeries. I had full-time carers. I didn't get out of bed for 25 years. I've got five major organs removed. I was on a walking stick. I didn't work. I was on disabilities. Um, and this all started when I was eight. So when I was eight, I got chicken pox, normal chicken pox. But then after that, I couldn't get up out of bed. So um, my glands were like, actually, the doctor said they didn't know what was wrong. And I just would fall, literally fall asleep in class. It was like chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr type thing that came after the chicken pox. Went on for years. And then eventually an you know, nose and throat specialist took my... Um, said take your tonsils out took my tonsils out adenoids out and then progressively i got better okay so i stayed well till i was about now i'm like 11 or 12 at this stage and i stayed well till i was about 16 15 16 then i had severe pelvic pain to the point where they were doing surgeries to try try and ease the pain once again they couldn't find something that would cause that much pain so there was things wrong, like hormone imbalances. There was like these gland masses that they removed, but nothing that should cause that much pain. I was in so much pain by the time I was 19 that when they did some biofeedback um, for me um, on my body, which they use when women give birth, so they use these machines and then you, you train to relax the muscles, is there was no start reading for me. My nerves were literally firing like contractions all the time around my pelvis. So more surgeries really couldn't work or do anything. And they eventually, a, a, this top surgeon went in and he found that there was a second piece of uterus attached to nerve ligaments on one of my um, uteral sacral ligaments. And this causes more problems than most things being attached in the wrong place because my body would have identified as having two uteruses, which means the brain is mapped with external estrogen receptors. It causes huge amounts of problems with pain when you've got more estrogen receptors. But also my whole pelvis was basically twisted at this point. So they took it out and my pain went. But I was pretty worn out from what I'd been through. But I did work for a bit. Um, and then what happened was he, I started to feel the pain come back. So they started to give me pain relief for this and I kept trying to work and I was getting really faint all the time I couldn't stay conscious anyway I ended up I didn't know at the time I was vomiting blood and I couldn't stay conscious they rushed me off to emergency because digestive blood is brown it's not red so I didn't know I thought I was just bringing up dinner. and anyway I got there and my hemoglobin was like just like almost like a zilch like not completely but it was pretty bad and so they gave me some blood transfusions and they said, like, what's going on? And I said, well, I've got this horrible pain and they're going to move me to another hospital. And then a gastro doctor came down and he said, have you got any new pains in your body? And I said, look, at night I can get quite sharp gut pains. Anyway, he said, I'm going to do a quick scope. I sent my mum home and said, we'll be in and out within about an hour and a half. Anyway, 14 hours later, they had to fly, fly they had to bring in another surgeon from another area because there was a perforated ulcer but i didn't feel it because the pain in my back was so bad so they tried to save my stomach duodenum intestines and then i was good they thought i was good and then i was vomiting blood again back into emergency surgery came out and they said if it happens again we have to remove these organs or most of the parts that are damaged get out within a few weeks vomiting blood and this time i'm all in hospital this is all in hospital so they bought, took me in, they took it all, the, the stomach out, most of the stomach, they left a little bit. Um, then the duodenum came out and then they took the um, top of my intestines out. So I came out of that and then I progressively finally got back to work, but my pain after my back got really bad. Um, the surgeon who did the first surgery didn't want to go back in because I'd been through so much at this stage, but I said, you have to, I'm in too much pain. So he went back in. He said there was a surgical error made where they didn't take all of that second piece of uterus. So it, what had happened is it opened and then spread onto my bowel and my bladder and causing like cramping and more pain. 
So at this stage, I'm on literally, I'd wake up in the morning, have 500 milligrams of OxyContin. I'd be having breakthrough all day of, of 60 milligrams, another 500 at night. I was in Valley, antidepressants, ketamine, pethidine, um, fentanyl on my arm, Botox injections, cortisone, like hormone replacement, you name it. But I was full-time carers. I was like, I couldn't do anything, but I was in hospital or a bed. Now this went on. So I basically been in a bed most of all my entire life. The only time I'd leave is to go to hospitals or maybe an occasion I could get to the or something like that. From the age of like 20, this is happening. So now I'm getting towards 30 and they give me a, um, a, a drug which puts me into chemical menopause. And all of a sudden my pain went, like I was still a wreck from everything I'd been through, a lot of pain in the body, but my pain in that pelvic, <clears throat> that went. And I had nerve pain in the face, in the arms, it was horrible. So I said, I can't do any more drugs, I want a hysterectomy. So they eventually gave that to me. <clears throat> and um, then after that surgery is where massive problems started. So when you they tried to take me for the pain medication is my body couldn't take anymore, right? It just, and plus it'd been so much is vomiting, diarrhea, blacking out. My parents had to take me to the shower. And you can't stay on that amount of medication. I could barely think. Once you've got no pain, that drug is like making you sick. So it's making me sick on it, making me sick off it. And this continued for years. I could come off small amounts. Like, like uh, as soon as it basically was like after three weeks, I'd be like, I've got to come off more. I'm feeling too sick from it. It got to the point I was in ICU all the time because I was just losing so much weight. My all, all of my electrolytes were constantly out. I was just like they I was losing all my hair. They didn't know. It was like I was just dying slowly and no one could help me. Then I had a break with reality where I lost part of my memory. Um, where I knew I could barely even say my own name. I really couldn't even tell I knew things that had happened, but there was no emotion attached. I was like void of, of many things. And so I was in a psych unit for about th four months at this stage. They took me off the rest of my medication, put me on something to try and help me with some sort of mood disorder, which made me even sicker. So once I came out though, I came off that and I People thought I was doing really well, but remember, I don't have much of a memory. So I, I can do things at a very basic level. Um, but I was going to the gym. I worked for my brother-in-law. I was eating a paleo diet at this stage, and that included nuts, seeds, veggies, but also a meat dish at night. And I did really well during that year, but every time I get better, I get my memory back, right? And if you get your memory back, you have a identification of 25 years of living in hell, and at the end of this year, I got shingles and then I couldn't walk, talk. I have got something called NFD, which is a functional neurological disorder where the communication between the body and brain kind of breaks down. It was like I had a stroke. Full-time carers again looking after me. They had to teach me how to do all of these things again in the hospital. At this time, I became vegan. So I think of like that where I'm losing my memory to identify with who I was as like a spiritual awakening because I couldn't eat anything with a face. I'm like, what right do I have taking like, you know, mother's babies when, you know, that's just not for me. So whenever I could, I would get someone to put on the, the food thing, I'm vegan, I'm vegan, you know, in hospital. And this because I was in and out of hospital now and then I came out of the neurological hospital and then I was in psych units in acute wards. Once for the next couple of years, one stint was 10 months with one-on-one -on -one care. I just was, I just wasn't who I was before. And, and I couldn't get back there. But I came out of this. They put me on some medication. So about 38, 39, this stage. They put me on some medication that um, I was on before I had that first break of, you know, of losing my, my memory. And it kind of triggered something. It did not fix me. Um, and remember, I'm eating healthy vegan food this whole time, especially when I was in the private psych hospitals. They're making me salads with tofu. They're making me beautiful salads, vegetables, fruits, very healthy. Um, anyway, so I came out of that. I couldn't cope with the PTSD. So I started drinking. Within a few months, my liver started to fail and um, I was in hospital for another three weeks. And then my and mum and dad said, we can't do this anymore. This is all too much. So from that point on, I was, well, I was basically homeless. I lived in a hotel, a few hotels, and then a family member helped me get an apartment. And this is where things change because this is the time where I, I've never cooked for myself. I'm vegan, but I'm still so sick. I can barely even read and write. So I would get fruit and vegetables and things like that and just eat them raw. And then as I did that, I would start to do things. And I'm like, what's going on here? Then I would make like little 
this is what I make, dry roasted pumpkin, tomato, basil, and garlic, right? Dry roast it in the oven, pull it out. Simple to make, eat it. Back in bed, all my symptoms, PTSD, I had POTS, I had rashes, I had gut problems, hormone problems, all these symptoms would come back. So I was like, Sky, what are you willing to do? I didn't know what I was doing really, but I knew that these raw, uncooked foods, these vibrant foods were working for me. So I started to just eat raw. And because I couldn't read or write well, I got on Instagram, saw all these beautiful pictures that people made of these salads and these smoothies. And I'm like, that's me, you know, that's me. So I did this within six weeks, all of my symptoms had pretty much disappeared. It took two years for a perfect blood test. So no supplements, no nothing. I got perfect blood work. And remember, I'm missing parts of my stomach which should be doing the work of absorbing like B12 and iron. Not all of that, all my anemia went. Um, have, I've had B12 injections. That's the only one I have had once. I chose to do that. Um, anyway, so basically, yeah, I ate raw foods and like – I got life like and then also I didn't just get lose the symptoms I started a business I bought my first apartment I was connecting to family I was outside walking I started swimming in the ocean through winter like raw foods literally don't just save your life they give you like your dream Wow Sky amazing I had no idea you had been through that much I knew you had a powerful healing journey and I was looking forward to hearing all the details. Oh my gosh, you are a blessing. You are a miracle. And look at your body, what it went through and healed itself. Oh my gosh. It's, and I love how you ended that little part of your conversation that, you know, raw foods, you know, what it gives you, your life back, right? It does. And, wow, look at you. Oh my gosh. I, you went through so much. You went through so much. My gosh. I'm, I'm so sorry that you went through all of that, you know, and, and and look at you now and and your ages like when you were going through that i think you said what 38 you said around there when you were or was that the medications you were on a lot of medications yeah. right so there's stages so there was like when i was a little kid it was like first off it was you know i had you know the chicken pox started um this whole process and then the glands you know i had those with the tonsils removed and then it was the chronic pain and then it was the you know they took I had like 60 surgeries. So they took out, you know, they're taking out, yeah, there was tumors, but it was mostly taking out ligaments, nerves, glands, injections, um, like realigning the back because it kept like twisting. Um, it just went on and on. And then it was, um, of course, the medication. And I was so sick that I was too sick on it. But every time they dropped it, I just, it was like everything just started to fail. And that's when I was in ICU all the time. Then I came out of that um, with, that's when I had a break with reality and just part of my memory and my identification of what had happened was not there. And then I function kind of well. And then every time I get well, you get your memory back. You become who you were. And that's what you've got to be careful of because old patterns come back. Then it was the shingles, which I've had again recently, just like the chickenpox, right? So that opened a whole floodgate. Then I could walk, talk in neurological hospital. Then, so it's like, so it starts when I'm eight and then you've got the pain in the teens, in the 20s, and then it was coming off the medications and the psychiatric problems through my 30s and for, and through my 30s, but also like the functional neurological disorder, the pots, the rashes, the hormone problems, the injections I need because I'm missing my stomach. It just... It was nonstop and like I was like I don't even know how I survived that. Like, who I was when I found raw foods was literally like it wasn't even you can't even say that I was a person like what I know as people. Like it's just like you, your soul is taken. Um but there's part of me that um I think when I'm when you're down, that down and you can't trust yourself, you can't trust the world, you've just so it's just all too much you feel the sun you feel nature and i think that that and i was eating vegan foods like healthy vegan foods at this time it was like my support system so it was easy to trust when it guided me even more and then after that what i'll say to people is that stuff got me out of bed but then i was in i would want had to be in nature all day so when i could get up and out i literally would lay in a park on the grass all day just not knowing that i was grounded but knowing i felt better because i was literally having Having seizures when I was around like um, even Wi-Fi or like too much metal my body must have been so toxic it was around anything that wasn't natural so that's why um, yeah that really worked for me like the sound music um, and I was 
smoking, drinking, I was doing anything to mask at that stage. And that all just shifted over to like the sun and just raw foods and fruit and the ocean and like walks and yeah. Just being out in nature, nature's so healing. That's so fascinating how you gravitated towards that for your healing to be outdoors most of the time. And then when you noticed, you know, the shift happening when you started to heal, when you included raw foods, right? And then you said when you would eat some cooked foods, you would get back in bed, that you wouldn't feel great, right? And then yeah. the raw, so you start, that's when you started to discover raw foods, right? And, yeah. and, the, and the, something was happening. It was just before my 40th birthday. It was literally July 8th, I think is the date. I was like, um, I started it all. And then I think, well, my birthday's on August 13th. So it was a month before my 40th. So it was like this gift I gave myself for my 40th. Yes. Oh my goodness. So, so now you're living this plant-based raw vegan lifestyle yeah. and how, how is your life going now? What does your life look like? You're a day, a day in a life with sky. What does sky oh. do and eat? So, so my life recently had another huge shift. So I got shingles again at the end of last year. And once again, I couldn't get up and I was getting all my old symptoms back, not during the shingles. It's always after it kind of kicks mast cell activation um, where I get the POTS, I get the histamine intolerance, I get the bleeding candida, all of this. And then I get the FND on top of it. And I was finding that if I was eating salads and nuts during this time, I literally could not get up. So if I had like just a, usually before I was okay with that. And then if I had something lighter like watermelon all day or grapes all day, I could get up and shower. But I wasn't functioning. I could not go for a run. I could barely walk down the street. So then because I'm missing my stomach, I was never called to juicing because I get what's called dumping syndrome where I get a, um, a blood sugar spike from having um, things like juices. You know, you haven't got the fibers to buffer it and it doesn't go into my GI tract or my intestine slowly it, it, because I'm missing the holding tank, which is the stomach, it dumps. So that's where the name comes from. So I would get like diarrhea, dizziness, tachycardia. So I stayed away from juicing, but I realized very easily that the lighter raw foods were getting me up. So at this point, I started juicing the watermelon and I noticed I could do more and more, but it took a while to commit to it. Um, once I did, I think I was just scared. Once I did, within four days, I was up again. Um, and I have been, so I basically, it's almost probably day 70 now of just juicing. And I've had about, now I've had about seven or eight meals. So I stopped on day 46 and then I tried some food and then I went back on juice for another eight days. And then I would try some food, juicing again, think again for another five, six, seven days. And now slowly, um, but it's still mostly juice is where I'm at. So when I tell you what I'm eating in a day, it's very much based on coming off um, off the back of that. So okay. I okay. am having like, I will get up, I will have coconut water, um, about a litre of coconut water. I will then juice and it'll usually be a fruit juice, um, it usually grape juice or just watermelon juice. And then in the afternoon, I may have a green juice or a small meal of some type where it might be a small salad, a little bit of fruit. Um, it's more of like I kind of have it, I think, to kind of like, it's more of a psychological thing, the eating. is we, It makes you feel human really is eating is such a normal thing right but um i will go back to juice usually after it so it's just like a small meal um and then i have at night sometimes like a, a walnut omega threes walnut milk or hemp milk hemp seed milk um and i will drink coconut water with that all day so it's mostly juices and most of what i'm telling you is safe food so for me histamine candida everything was getting SIBO was getting set off so i found watermelon is great for me Grapes were great for me. Greens like part juice. This is all juice right now. Is parsley, um, celery, cucumber, herbs. They're great. And nut, a small amount of nut milk um, is safe for me. But I also, if, if you've seen on my story, I've been doing these like cocktail or mocktail type um, drinks. Yeah, so they they are like fun as well. But I keep mostly because I'm coming off the back of, of that, and that's settled my system a lot. So that's where I'm at. Okay, wow. So you've been having a tremendous amount of juice lately because, you know, and it makes sense. And hopefully this can help other people too because 
when we have a compromised situation, immune system, health issue, organ issues, intestines aren't absorbing properly, juice can be the thing to the rescue yes. because the body can absorb it no matter what. So it makes perfect sense why you are having so much juice because you're flooding your system with all the, this nutrition yes. to yourself. Um, that, you know, how, how would you get it otherwise? Especially if you were in a situation like yours, it really is a miracle saver. You know, it's the it, way to do it. Oh, it, it sure is. And what I've said to people who are following my journey, so what I realized is I know that me sharing helps a lot of people, but what I find is when I'm down and recovering, I can help so much, so many people because so many people are going through and want to know how to get out of their situation. So I've shared so much of it. But what I will say is based on being single is what I think happens for me is it's all gut health. So as I get well, each time I get well, I didn't want to function in society and run and live a full day of working. You have to eat a lot of calories. So when you're sick in bed, you don't eat that much. Not having a gut is not really a problem. And I never, like, factored these things in. As I got well, you think the gut can just keep going. But also when I'm doing exercise, you're also moving the gut in different ways. And not that I was constipated in any way, but my gut was blocked. And I could tell because I just was not having great digestion before the shingles. Um, I was not comfortable eating that, like, but I needed the fuel. And I see that once how I got over what I did is twofold. There's a few things going on. You need to find a way to get your gut moving because what happens is if the gut becomes stagnant, you're not only not getting nutrition, you're not getting hydration, and it gets stressed. Your liver and kidneys are also going to feel the pressure of that, and this means your blood isn't filtering, and this is where you start to get the rashes, right? You start to get the histamine rashes, the block-ups, the acidity. The first thing you want to do, and I'm not saying it has to be juice, it can be smoothies, it can be lighter meals, it can be whatever works for you. And it's, it's to get it moving and get something to going back inside of you, you know, like the, the hydration and, and the food. And that's what I think what I did worked. While you're doing that, you have to not stir the pot. So whatever your stirring is, some people's are different to others. Some people have pineapple, some people can't. Some people can have, you know, a smoothie, some people can't. You have to find what I call your safe foods. And once you go through that, this is that way you're getting nutrition, you're getting calories, you're getting hydration, and you're able to then live. But on top of that, you've got to find a way to, to basically help that whole system heal, right? At the same time, I was very called to, to know, I guess, that omegas have had to play some part in my life, um, as in the rebuilding, the restructuring of cells, because they basically build the cells in the body. And you need to have enough of that to get into the system. So to, to have it spent sparsely through the foods you're eating is great, but you've got to get as much in as you can. Now, that's difficult because chair and flax are hard to absorb. So I then, I found hemp and walnut worked well for me. Um, walnut, I know, is high histamine, but works for me. And slowly, so if I go a couple of days without them, I start to notice hair breakage, I start to notice bloating. Um, so that is, and it's not easy to get something like that in because it's heavier, but that's what's helping me while I've got nutrition going through. And then I've slowly added foods in and I'm not having histamine reactions anymore as long as I have small foods. So I'm moving along. Yes, absolutely. Walnuts are amazing, right, with their primrose oil for the brain. Oh. So now do you eat the walnuts just like that or do you put them in your smoothies? So I at the moment have had been um, juicing. I've been making um, a walnut milk that I've been doing for a couple of months now and have at night. So I find that either the, the walnut and the hemp just work well. I tried black seed milk. I can make it, but it just didn't do the same for me as, as those other two. I did get some fresh... Um, so these are straight from a farm I get from the farmer's markets. And the difference, having those, even I can eat them not blended, I can have a couple of them as opposed to if I have a door, I don't do as well. But um, to keep it up, really the milk is, is what works for me. But you can have it in a, have it in a smoothie. It's there. It makes you feel incredible, right? Yeah, I love walnuts in my smoothie. I put them in there almost every day. So. Oh. <laughs> So with walnut milk sounds so creamy and delicious. So Sky, here's a little printout, you guys, of 
a recipe from Sky's recipe book that is in the Vegan Health Bundle that's available right now. Remember, March 1st through the 10th. If you want to get it, it's an $8,000 value. You can get it for only $49. Make sure that you go to the links that are in our bios, okay? Now, I made this recipe from Sky's recipe book, and it is a, a celery pizza, a raw, simple pizza. And I love it because it is so simple to make. The base was fun and easy to make with celery, and it tasted so delicious. And there's more things in here that I want to make from Sky's recipe book. Let's see. She Oh, the dressing. Oh, my gosh. Your dressing, the raw tomato and bell pepper dressing is one of my favorites now. Oh. I've been putting that on everything. <laughs> so I, it's so good. And there's some other things in here that I'm excited to try, like the um, sprouted chickpea and lentil patties. Good. Because good. I love chickpeas. They're like my favorite. So I do eat a little bit of cooked still. So when I have... Um, Cooked, I love garbanzo beans are like my passion. Like I love garbanzo beans. So so I think I'm gonna try your raw chickpea thing. That sounds really, really good. And Thai chili sauce, eggplant chips, and roots and herb loaf. Oh my gosh, you guys, you've got to check out the bundle, if anything, just to get Sky's book. I mean, you get tons of stuff in there from plant-based doctors and all kinds of recipes from creators for kids, for weight loss, for everything. But just think, if you just wanted this and you get it, it's worth it. You know, so just find the things you like, and maybe you won't use all of it, but there's plenty in there for everybody. So, yeah. so, so tell us a little bit, Sky, about your inspiration for your recipes and, you know, how you came up with your creations. Okay, so just know that when I went raw, what I was drawn to was the idea that I guess because it was very primitive when I got well, but the vibrancy of food, I worked out. So if you get some green beans and you cook them and you put them down and you get fresh green beans, you write out what you see. So the, the green cooked ones, you'll probably say floppy, a bit dull, you know, a bit mushy. And then you, you go to the next bean and you're like, well, structured, bright, vibrant green. I started to notice because remember I haven't really connected to anyone in years, okay? Like not face to face or being to my mind is very just me. So I started to notice that we actually feel like the words, okay, of what we see. And I noticed that that the vibration of the food, like if you saw a bright carrot or a bright water or tomato, I felt better. Okay. So as I came through this, that's basically how my I, I, I gauged what I did. I got rid of nuts, seeds, spices, everything. So if you look in that book, all there is is fresh produce. So it's all fresh garlic, onion, avocado, um, you know, and basically I just had like avocado fat for the past few years. It's now that I'm like, okay, I've got to up my omegas. But um, so that recipe book is based on a couple of things. The, the premise that you can eat simply and still get taste like as in like you don't have to put dried process and the and look if you can have it and that works for you go for it sometimes it can feel nice to give the body a break and there's a lot of people um that i work with that are very sensitive and so dishes like that really work the other thing that's apparent in there is that i do like chili um is that i do love the, like, i guess it's like australasian like we get have a very asian influence here in a lot of like our foods so we like you know it's like that pie flavor. there's a lot of like you know the sweet chili flavors where there's like you know you've got um things like lime and mango and chili and avocado mm -hmm. like those combos which is so yummy a bit of garlic um so that really excited me when i got well i couldn't believe the food could make you feel good so the whole time i was sick all of this time food made me feel not good people like you have an eating disorder i'm like no i've got other problems going on. trust me that's not my problem but when i eat i feel worse and then now i know why i would eat and i feel so amazing after all of these meals and then the other thing is i've tried to um keep them really simple like as you know that celery pizza base is just celery and once you combine the right flavors you get salty sweet you get acid you got the garlic like it's pungent there it's it's beautiful like you got it's all fresh yep all fresh all delicious and i really love the celery base of your pizza it just brought out the natural healthy mineral salts yes. that we need in our, for electrolytes and for our body and for homeostasis so 
Um, you know, when people are transitioning away from like the bad foods, the salty fried foods, it's like, you know, try a recipe like Skye's, like her, her celery pizza, because it's going to give your body that salt that it's looking for, That's but wrong. not in the bad food. You're going to get it in the good food now. And as long as you're giving your body what it needs from the good foods, you won't have those crazy cravings for bad, fried, disgusting, unhealthy food. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, yeah. So important for that. I think out of everything I've learned on this journey is if you can keep your um, mineral balance, your electrolyte balance in check, you really don't have cravings. So people will probably find it, it can be hard to digest sometimes, like, you know, um, uncooked broccoli and things like that. But the more of those minerals things you get in, and that's where um, celery is great, the herbs are great. You'll find, like, if you have a green juice, you can really smack out some of those um, cravings you get. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, wow, I'm just so excited to make some more of your stuff. Yay! So, if you guys are just joining us, we're just letting Sky tell us about her healing journey and just learning so much from her. Her recipe book is in the Vegan Health Bundle. Remember, that's going on right now. So this is your only chance to get it, March 1st through the 10th. And then that is it. It's an $8,000 value for only $49. So just reminding you, um, the link is in our bio. So make sure that you get that and you'll get Sky's recipe book, my seven-day juice and meal plan recipe books in there. There's tons of recipe books that you can, you know, incorporate into your lifestyle you know maybe it's it's the time it's time that you want to get healthier you want to eat more plant-based foods everything in here is oil free in the entire bundle it's oil free it's vegan so plant-based there's cooked meals there's raw meals so just incorporating everything uh, you can start to feel better look better function better and you know raw foods you know that's pretty much what sky and i do i'm high raw i have a little bit of cooked and Sky, I believe you're fully 100% raw. Um, I'm close. I just like to have a little cooked here and there. But when I just have the raw, I mean, it's the best. Even if, even when I do decide to have a little bit of cooked, I feel the difference. I feel uh, the difference in the temperature in my body and also just the energy levels. So all raw, oh my gosh, like you just feel like you're 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 soaring when you eat raw food. So. You know, just even just adding more raw foods to your to your life, guys, will give you more energy for life, and you'll start to feel better. And all the enzymes that are alive in the food can help digest your cooked food if you're still eating cooked, because cooked food is void of any natural enzymes because it's cooked. It's all cooked out of it. So um, you want to make sure that you're adding that. And and just look what all of the living raw foods has done for Sky. You know, it's enabled her body to get that nutrition, that enzymatic activity, that life force that it needed to nourish her cells so she could start to heal and regenerate and get her strength back. And yeah. it's just amazing how in your story, you, you literally could tell, like, when you were healing, if you had cooked food, you went back to bed. If you had raw food, yeah. you were alive. And um, why wouldn't anybody want more of that, you know, in their life? to feel yeah. better and have more energy and and that's i think why we're so passionate about it right sky oh, yeah 100 percent. i think also where you have to see where i was when i discovered the cooked food sent me back to bed is that i was living alone and as i said not connected to anybody could couldn't really even watch a television like you could look at it but i couldn't absorb information for some reason so in that sense i didn't have a lot of external noise that could contribute to why I felt sick. Like I literally ate the cooked food and felt sick. And I've been like plant-based, I've been vegan, very healthy vegan for, for years. And even at that time, but I still wasn't functioning. And I, I like, once I discovered that, it was, you know, it, it completely, you know, it completely changed my life. But I, what I wanted to say is that I think um, when you have people around you all the time or you're watching television or you're very busy, you can't always pinpoint what's causing it. Whereas I was literally just like, like a vegetable myself and the only thing I had to do each day was shower and eat and like keep myself alive. And then I noticed that I, I was getting slow and it wasn't like, it was quite amazing the, the feeling of being able to get to my clothesline and not be like, how did I, like, just like drag yourself down there or needing some sort of stimulant to get yourself, your body anywhere to actually just go, Oh, I came down. Maybe I'll get, and I didn't get the clothes in for two days, but I got them down there, right? So it was like 
these milestones. But I wanted to, what I want to say is, is that I, th I was in that perfect situation to know that it wasn't anything else causing me to be knocked out. It was, that was just the food. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, you know, because sometimes life can be so noisy, you know, and it's yeah. like there's so many distractions and people are so disconnected from their own thoughts because of, of everything that's pulling their thoughts constantly, you know, being on the phone constantly, you know, people watching TV, listening to music. As soon as we, you know, pick up our phone in the morning and we look at it, we're almost like, we're not thinking on our own per se because our brain is being uh, suggested all of these ideas and information and so I think it's so important to have like a morning routine too where you like don't touch anything for a while so you're with your own thoughts so that's really key that you brought that up you know how you had that that time to really be in tune with yourself so you knew it was the cooked food that made you sleepy because you were so in tune right with your environment and your body and what was going on around you. Yeah, and I think, yeah, that stands out to me. The other thing that stands out to me is when you're in that situation, you've got no other voices, no other people, no other stimulation, is we become the words we think. And a lot of the words we think come from what we put in and whether that is visually on our screens or what we eat. It was so apparent when I first got well that I'd have to sit out, you know, I was telling you I was outdoors. Once I could get outdoors, I was always out there. I'd literally sit in the sun and I fell in love with myself because the voice that came through as I ate these foods was so kind. And how I guided my life from that time was directed by how I felt. Like it was so, the world was so strong to me. So like I'd go to get a banana peel and I realized I was about to put in the wrong bin. I'd start to feel bad. That hurts us in some way. I'm not saying that everyone feels that. I'd be like, I've got to put it in the compost. People who don't think about it, I'm not sure if they, they feel it the same. That's just an example. But I started to learn that what is going through our head is what we are doing to our body. So if you're in a headspace where you've got lots of negative chatter, you've got to have some outlets of how you're going to calm that because you literally are not just riding your body, you're riding your life. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you for sharing that. I think that's just such a powerful message and can really help people and make them kind of think, you know, about their mindset, their life, their thoughts, yeah. what they're being influenced by, you know. And, you know, I've heard that our mind, and I totally believe it, that we have, our thoughts have the power to heal ourselves, oh. you know, and that the brain can produce certain chemicals and things that we need for healing and regeneration. So our thoughts are more powerful than we could ever imagine the thoughts and the words we say to ourselves and what we hear and be careful what we hear you know a, a powerful technique i like to share is that you can reject anybody else's opinion or negative remark about you like don't accept it you know if it's something that somebody tells you that makes you feel unhealthy or down in your mind just reject that because you have the power and then replace it with something positive and good so be careful what you guys are saying to yourselves. And uh, that's great that you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something that I think we go through life and we think if we do the right action, we're doing the right thing. But if that action that we're taking comes with a negative thought every time you do it, you've really got to assess why you're doing it. Another thing that's always stuck with me is what Chris Kendall said, and that is because you're saying mind can change a lot of things, and that is true but one of the hardest things to do is get that change to take place right and eating is one of those physical things that even if you, at the start you're having you know i don't want to sell juice or i don't want to have that if you keep putting that in your thoughts will change it's that one thing like if you wake up and you're like i'm going to change my life and i'm going to do this and I'm gonna do that that's all wonderful but sometimes that shift is so mentally hard that to do to start with diet is like this training which because each time you eat, it's like think of yourself as a computer, right? And you're just going to have a, each time you're getting a software download or, you know, an operating, like it's like an operating guide, right? So you can't, you've got to put the right foods into the computer. It's like a computer. You can't put the wrong disk in or you can't connect to the wrong network. And also all that runs on your system is what you put in. And it can be hard to commit to visually, you know, I'm going to do meditation. But food, you see it and it will change even if at the start your thoughts with the foods good so i really liked that i remember having a good chat with him about like my story and he said you know even if we're down you know and you've got the bad thoughts you put the foods in and that will 
change without you needing to because the mind is a hard thing to change i saw the other day it's like by the time we're 35 95 percent what we think is pre-programmed by the world we're putting to, including our genetics. So it's only like 5% is actually we have no control over. It's all being, you know, programmed, the foods you eat, then it's, it's, it's like a rabbit yeah. hole, right? And, and then yeah. like where I went from where I like lost my memory type thing was the unprogramming. Like you can't be programmed when you can't remember. And that is a shock to see the world without glasses on right yeah wow so what kind of tips do you have for everybody that something that you do every day that you know keeps you on track and makes a difference helps you you know with your mindset like you were talking about the thoughts are there any little tips or anything that you have of some kind of routine that you do every day I say one of the most important things is this is all about love okay everything I do comes from love I love myself so I get up and exercise. I love myself, I get up and gym. I love myself so I, I I put things through the juicer and I stand there for an hour doing a batch of juice, you know. And during that time, a lot of people are still sleeping and, and you might, a lot of people's then heads go to jealousy. I'm like, no, but I love putting all this goodness into me. If I don't put that goodness into me, when I'm out in the world, I can't give love. Like, And what I learned is that in this life, you work on yourself, not on your job. Because a lot of people who get up at 6 a.m. if their boss tells them to, but they can't do it for themselves. And you have to set the message that sends to you the cells in your body is that you're not worth anything, but everybody else is. So let's wear you down yeah. until you you're basically dead and nobody wants that anyway you know your family nobody wants that so you're better off spending even if it takes six months to like pull away from people a bit keep doing these loving things you know instead of drinking on the weekend have a massage you know go from a spoil yourself in new ways um make recipes like if you like pizza well friday night is raw pizza night or plant-based pizza night like you don't have to you just got to shift it's all there like the entire world you know is still there about yeah. loving yourself enough to recreate that um you know in a beautiful beautiful loving way so i say whatever you do come to love i like that i like that let me see if there's any comments um juanita sky she loves your name oh, and, oh, yeah you. so beautiful name i agree i love your name too it's it's gorgeous and juanita also says for fruits and vegetables which is in the beginning god said for us to eat yes yes, yes. yes. so let's see anybody else have any questions let us know and um yeah, beautiful. Everybody loves you, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yes, all about the love. And I love that message that you just shared with everybody about loving yourself enough to, to get up and juice ahead, you know, and people will get up and go to work for somebody else and they won't get up and do the work for themselves, yes. you know, and that's huge, huge. That's so important to, so to love yourself enough. Yeah is a lot of people like, you know, I've got kids, they've got to come first. You, If you've decided to have kids, you've got to get up even earlier because your kids will like emulate what you do. And you're no good for your kids if you turn up with two hours sleep on caffeine and you haven't had breakfast. Like, as opposed to getting up, even going for a short walk, making yourself a juice, having a hearty breakfast, maybe saying some nice mantras. And then imagine what you give to your child and their, their world and their friends and their family. That's yeah, what I, yeah. I like to shift it. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, I'm excited about everybody just learning more from you and uh, hopefully get the bundle, you guys, the vegan yeah. health bundle. Remember, March 1st through the 10th, $8,000 value for only $49. So uh, the link is in our bios if you want to pick that up today. And you'll get Sky's recipe book, okay, right here. Uh, my seven day juice and meal plan book is also in there. Um, tons of stuff. I'm going to make some more of Sky's yeah. recipes. So yeah. I'm super excited and just um, feeling more infused with love after interviewing you, Sky. I so <laughs> I hope you know what a blessing you are and how much you radiate just so much love and caring and affection. And I can feel that from you. So um, I think you're a blessing and you can help. You can help a lot of people just with your story, you know, and being a, such a great example of of what you did and what you've overcome and how you continue to live and enrich your life with raw foods and juices and love and mindset 
in everything that you've shared with us. So in, uh, in closing here, is there anything else that you would like to add or share with everybody? Um, um, I, I say to people, you do. You. So this bundle is great for doing that. So I feel a lot, I get contacted by a lot of people who are so confused because there is a lot of information out there. So don't see this, this bundle or anything out there as in like, I've got to do this, or I've got to eat this up, this, or I've got to fast. Just what do you feel like doing? If you're including fruit, vegetables, raw foods, you know, yoga, you're doing amazing. Like you, you don't, you're not supposed to be, every person I've worked with that heals is every one of my colleagues like rosie and i have healed differently we don't eat the exact same diet we've done what's for us so you know listen to what you need because you know if you wake up and have a salad don't feel guilty because you have supposed to say at the end of the day I mean, if you want a salad for breakfast you have a salad for breakfast. Not like heal your way is what i want to yeah. say to you. yeah that's beautifully said beautifully said okay well wonderful you guys um Give Sky some love. Let's see some hearts today. And uh, hopefully you guys will, will take something that, you know, from today's interview that can help you just get healthier and live a healthier life. And that um, you're excited to try some recipes too, some of Sky's recipes. So I'll be posting some more pictures of your pizza. <laughs> Thanks for the love, you guys. Your juices this week as well. Those juices look amazing. They look so nourishing. Yes, they're so nourishing. They're just they're my life. They're just everything. So, so yeah, take, make some juice. Send I a picture will. to me. I will. So, yeah. Guys, so check it out. Okay. All right, love. Good, good seeing you and interviewing you. Everybody have a fantastic day. God bless you and just love and good health to everybody. Bye. Bye.